today's welding fabrication project. We're gonna use this aluminum square tubing and turn it into something like this or something like this. All along for the journey, it's already all cut out. So somebody cut it out for me and just gotta weld it together. But essentially they're gonna be these little stand things. I think it goes like this to hold up. It'll be mounted onto a wall. It looks like it holds something up, I think. So, pretty simple. So, go away. That. With the little piece like that. And I think the big piece like that. And just center it up in that square tubing. And bring you along for the journey if you want to watch. When RC back again, welding fabrication video. And this one is July 3rd, 2025. I think it's about 85 to 90 degrees in Dunedin, Florida. A little hot, but not as hot today. It's a little rainy-ish, but I'll show you. It says about 85 degrees right now. Feels a little warmer in the sun, but that's it. I'm gonna start out by marking my squares, the center of them with the square, how to put them on. And this is six inch plate and we gotta mark it. But if you could see right here, see it's actually a little, hang on, where's the camera? It's like six in, it's like a, 50, a 16th under. And then same thing with this, it's like a 32nd under. So one thing I like to do is just measure from one side and half of six is three. And then I'll go this way and mark a three right there. And you see like that, you got a little bit right there. So I'll mark the center of that and that'll give us our super center, if you want to call it. I mean, for what this is, it's really not a big deal, but just something I like to do. And then from there, we will go one inch off each end. And then same thing with this one. One inch, one inch. And I'll just take my square and draw my line. And there you have it. Being that these are not gonna be, there's not gonna be a cap on the top. Looks like just a plastic cap goes on top. I'll be fine, but if you had to cap that off, you'd probably be better off drilling a little hole right in here for a little vent hole. That way no one sees it and it'll be covered up afterwards. So if you like that. And then if you had a cap on top of this, when you're welding this on the here, it might create a big pressure. So if you drill a little hole in there instead of drilling it in your tube somewhere. So that's food for thought, but we don't need to do that. And now these tubings are not cut super straight, but it'll still work. I don't know if you could see that, but it's really, it's kind of off. But if I lay it down, I can still make it square and for what it is, it's fine. But you see that gap right there? Little big gap. So we'll get to it though. What I did first is I well, they were already deburred, but I put a little bevel on it because it's a little thicker, and I washed it off with some aluminum cleaner. Now we're gonna go about fitting it up. Just clamp my parts down square with the square. So just like that, we got it clamped down, and their cuts aren't super perfect. Like once, this, this one's, these are pretty close to eight inches, but this one's supposed to be 16 or 18 and one's like a, like an eighth inch off from each other. So I could cut it down to size afterwards. So not worried about that, but um, yeah, just clamp down, use the fireball square to make it square. If you have pins, you could use pins, simple, whatever you got. You could use a framing square and just clamp one end down like I did. Put your framing square in, square it up and clamp that end down. So I'm gonna weld this first then I'll weld it to that afterwards. Fire up the old welder. Gas is like 20 CFH, it should be. Setting number two, 250 amps is usually what I leave it at, 125 frequency. AC balance would be 33% electro positive. Down slope none, end amps 10, post flow 13 seconds, pre flow 0.3 seconds, start amps 40, and that's it. AC, advanced square wave. Just gonna start off by tacking it, 
and then I'll fit that one up and tack it, and then I can weld it out while it's clamped down or something. We'll figure it out as we go along. Just four tacks, one in each corner, and I like to put like at least two dabs of wire with aluminum, because if you only do like one, sometimes it cracks pretty easily. I just noticed these cuts are really off. This one I'm gonna cut after I'm done, this piece. That's like a quarter inch long that way, and I could fit in a saw, but this one's like a quarter inch long this way, so I'm going to cut this out. Left it a fit in a saw after I do that, so I'm just going to cut a little bit off of that right now. All right, there we go. Eighth inch, it was only an eighth inch off, so it kind of went from the front, but I'm going to do it, and there we go. So just clamping it down with the square and measuring, moving things around just a tiny little bit to get it a little bit more precise. And on my measurement, put some tacks on it, one on each corner, and we should be good to go after that. It all tacked up, I want to show you. I'm going to these welds. Um, my last little tack had a crack in it, and I had to go back over and redo it. But that's why you always got to add enough wire and make sure to go do slow tacks and everything. With aluminum, it's really easy to crack. For this part, there's a couple ways you could go about fitting it up. I'm gonna tack it all together then I'll weld it afterwards. So essentially need it to be like that. I could take a different square on my other fireball squares. This guy right here. So I drop down and put it up like that. And that'll work like that. Or you can lay it down whatever your space is, like right there. I think that's two inches. So just two inches. Space of this up two inches and then clamp it like that and that should work too so either way do one of each way and that's why i like to just say if i got a little pile over there by that green thing this year and i just save a bunch of little shins and stuff that i use handy so you can go like this time lapse here for my little fit up and here we go all right pretty simple just grabbed another two inch square tubing and used it so it didn't rock back and forth clamped it down used that fireball tool square clamped that plate down made it nice and centered level square and everything same thing like you see right here just clamp it all down level check it put your tacks on and make sure your tacks are good too. Right, all tacked up, ready to start welding pretty much. And I chose to fit it all up or tack it all together beforehand because if I would have welded this to this and that one, it would probably be really hot to fit it up to this. That's why I did that. Um, you could clamp it down when you're getting ready to weld it if you want, if it's a critical part and you don't want to warp. This shouldn't warp too much. If anything, this thing will pull a little bit. I could either press it out or when I bolt it to the wall, it, the bolts will suck it back down into place and now's the time to just double check all your measurements to make sure everything's good and square this was all good and square eight inches eight inches 18 and 18 and that one was a little bit longer quarter inch longer and i'll just chop that off in the saw when i'm done and just wipe your marker marks off too now we'll get ready to start welding one last thing too how you got your corners how it's like sharp like that nice sharp fit up one thing I like to do is take the grinder and just go knock a little flat on it like that. If you can see that. Just so if they want to grind the welds down, they can. And you'll have uh, penetration and structural strength in there. Where here, if they ground that weld down after you welded it, it's really easy for it to break. So just do that with the grinder. All right, here we go with the bevels. I like to go towards that outside direction. I might have mentioned it when welding. That's like my process compared to the inside. So it warps to the outside instead of the inside. And just make sure with the bevels that you got enough heat going in there and you're adding a little bit more than normal like filler wire just to fill up that bevel, especially if you're gonna grind it down, which I'm not right here. 
but you want to make sure you have full penetration too. Slowly add a couple extra dabs of filler wire, flip it over and we'll start this one. I like to do add a couple dabs extra, like a one or two in the beginning too, for my starts and stops. And just make sure I wash in those tacks pretty good too. And just take it slow. Make sure you get your penetration, that's the biggest thing. And fill it up and add extra wire so you don't get no cracking but not much to it and then just taper off slowly again here and add a couple extra dabs and that helps prevent it from cracking and inside weld the inside corner i like to save for last because you know most likely warp or weld that way first so save that for last that way you have more strength to hold it from pulling in like that so all right getting to the inside weld usually takes a little more amperage to get to the inside of this unless you've yeah, got like really thin metal so that's another good reason for saving it but usually warps like that and pretty easy not a hard weld just uh yeah sorry for the video quality too i know once i start welding it gets blurry like that from the arc we'll try working on that in the future get something a little better and better close arc shots wow it's nice and warm and preheated we're going to weld that bottom plate too so it's not too hot it's actually like a perfect temperature help me warm it up a little bit so we'll go for it. before i start the arc i scratch the tungsten on the metal really fast without hitting the button or anything and that just helps a little smoother arc start and just let it rip keep on going it takes a little bit of heat to get to here i think i was at like 250 almost for this it was warm but not super warm probably didn't use 250 the rest of the way and just keep on going yeah bad quality video so sorry about that they were all meant to be close arc shots but we didn't get it unfortunately there you have it and all good didn't dip the tungsten once my last little dab boom there she goes but I think it came out all right. And you always want to make sure you wrap your corners like that. Like when I'm welding, like when I started this, I like to start kind of like wrapped a little bit so it makes it a little easier and go to here. And just wrap your corners though, because then you don't want to leave open corners. Definitely makes it stronger and it looks better. So there you have it. This one I'll probably time lapse for you. This was welding a little dirty. This one I didn't wire brush. I probably should have wire brushed it even though I cleaned it. But always good to wire brush it and i've had a little my gas was a little low so i had to turn it up but yeah like these when i weld the top ones i like to weld this corner first because if if anything will pull that way then i'll weld these two this side then this side and i like to weld it going this way if i can to pull not towards the inside so it doesn't pull in that way and then save that inside corner for last so that's my way all right, here's the time lapse of the second one. That's my little order of operations. I did that outside weld first, the sides, then that inside, and then just go all the way around. Doesn't really matter on the plate. And it just takes a little more amperage for the plate, but that's about it. All righty, folks, you ready? And there you go, there you have it. Nothing special, wire brush my thing off, chop that down a little bit. So now they're both 18 inches long. Actually, it was this one I chopped down, but um, that's it. And that was my dip tungsten. Just brush that off. Make sure you wrap your corners and everything. And took good, took a little good little bit of heat for that. That was quarter inch to three sixteenths, and that took about two hundred and fifty amps almost to weld that when it was heated up. So anyway, that's it though. One way of doing it. There's plenty of different other ways. We're gonna put a cap on this and go install it into a wall like that. There'll be one. It'll be like that, and then they can just hang their stuff on it. So that's it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, there's your little welds. Nothing super pretty. I think it would have been a little less. You can see a little dirtiness into it. That was from not wire brushing it, even though I cleaned it. Ooh, still hot and warm, but not the best, not the worst. that's it one little way of doing it easy cuts just 45s cut it to length do that drill your holes and that's it 
got my lunch. I'm gonna have me a little lunch. It's uh, chicken and rice. I uh, will sit down and hopefully you guys enjoyed that though. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Watch the ads. I get paid for the ads. Um, up to $32 so far. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, thanks guys. Uh, so look, that was a little bit more of the welding, even though you won't get us to see the actual bead and everything of it. So I'll get working on that in the future. I gotta find a little better camera system for that or something to show that. But anyway, it's starting to rain and thunder out, but thank you for watching. Let me know if you wanna see different types of videos, more like this, more welding, whatever you want. But thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Chris Wynarski, over and out.